Uh, so uh, anyway, last time uh, we learned about fragments. And you know, fragments are tough, right? It took me a whole lecture of cutting and pasting and editing to get that to work. But you know, you, you get something pretty powerful, right? When you, when you use fragments, um, you get these recomposable units of UI that you can interact with. But I, you know, I want to contrast that against kind of what we're going to do today, which is we're going to learn how to do a little bit smaller scale um, dynamic user interface stuff. So I think what I want to say about fragments is you not only get sort of a, a look, you get a UI with the different, the different widgets and layout and stuff, but it also responds to events. It has behavior. So it's kind of a self-contained thing that kind of contains both of those sides. It contains sort of UI and layout and appearance, and it also contains somewhat complicated event handling and stuff. It kind of just all operates as its own little component in that way, okay? And by contrast, today I'm going to teach you what if you wanted to have like a little chunk of UI that you wanted to reuse, but it wasn't really quite enough of a thing to make a whole fragment for. It didn't really need a lot of event handling per se. It was just kind of a little simple thing, but it was enough of a thing that you wanted to sort of repeat it or, or abstract it out or something like that. So I don't know, maybe if you're, if you're thinking about the big picture, maybe a activity is really big and a fragment is medium size, and then the thing we're doing today uh, is, is little, you know? So that's kind of the spectrum of recomposable UI. Um, also time, you know, depending on time, I also uh, will hopefully teach you a little bit about playing audio and music and different things that you can do with audio in an app. So that's kind of what we're gonna do today. And uh, let's see, dynamic UI. So here we go. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> so there's lots of reasons why you might wanna have a dynamic UI. I mean, we talked about how you might rotate the app and it has a different UI and stuff like that. But there's a slightly different use case which might be that the, the UI depends on something that you don't actually know until the app starts running. So maybe the, I mean, a really common example of this would be that the app grabs data from the internet or something, and then it displays that data. If you think about your Android Studio, you know, you haven't had a lot of things where you could specify a certain number of images or a certain number of buttons that you didn't know how many there were gonna be until the app started up, right? You would just drag them and drop them, and that's how many you would always have. But you might want something more dynamic based on a data source or based on whatever. So yeah, you want dynamic UIs sometimes, right? Okay, well, in such a case, you might want to write Kotlin code that creates UI widgets or UI objects. And you can do that. I mean, one thing that I, I don't know if I've actually really said in class before is that you actually can write an Android app with no XML if you really want to. No um, layout XML. You could just have, you know, in, in your, um, I've got an activity. We're going to do this app with about flags today, and we'll talk about it in a minute. But in your activity, in the uh, onCreate method, this line of code right here is called a layout inflation uh, command, where you are basically telling Android, please go to this XML file and read all of it, and then like turn that into widgets that appear on the screen. That's like what that line of code is doing. And if you just don't do that, you could write code that says, make a new text box and put it here, and then make a new button and put it here and stretch it this way and make it purple. And you could make Kotlin code to do all that stuff instead of doing all that stuff in XML. But the designer of Android felt that it was like easier or better to specify your layout this way rather than writing the Kotlin code for it. They just, they, in fact, and they're not alone in that um, preference. A lot of people like what you would call declarative user interfaces. Uh, as opposed to what you would call a procedural user interface, which would be code, you know, procedure, do this, do this, do that. That's procedural, right? Declarative is just like, here's generally what I want. Go just make it happen, you know? Um, so I'm going to actually hit undo because I want that line of code back, but, uh-oh, there. <laughs> I got the line of code back. But you can generate widgets in Kotlin code if you want to. And if you want to do that, the way you do it is you just say that you want to construct an object of whatever widget type, like button, text view, edit text, spinner, list view, all the classes, all the different types of widgets that you learned, there are Kotlin classes that represent them. Now you already know that because you do sometimes interact with widgets. Like you say, I want to find this view by ID and it's a spinner or it's a list view, or you refer to these objects by the magical variables that are based on their ID. So like you have talked to widgets in your Kotlin code before, but you can make a new one. 
So uh, again, if, Kotlin, if you're a little rusty on Kotlin or whatever, this line of code I'm calling a constructor. In Java, you would say text view TV equals new text view. But this is how you do a constructor in Kotlin. The parameter is this, where this would be your activity or something. Just constructing a widget does not put it on the screen yet. You have to set some of its properties, and then you have to tell Android like where to put it on the screen and stuff. But that's kind of how you get started. Okay? Um, <clears throat> if you want to add a widget to the screen, to a layout, well, I mean, every widget has to be inside of something. Like an activity has some sort of outer layout, whether it's a constraint layout or linear layout or grid layout or something. So if you want to do that dynamically, add a widget to a layout, you should make it so that there's a way for you to talk to the layout. And the way that you talk to anything in the UI is by giving it an ID. So you give your layout an ID. Then, you know, using Kotlin, whatever that ID is, there's now a variable in the Kotlin code that represents that thing. So layout objects have a method called add view. Remember, view is like the super class for all the widgets. So you make a new text view, and then you say add to the to the screen to the layout, and it shows up. Okay. Now, of course, we haven't told it much about the text view. What text should it display? Where should it be put? So you know, we have to learn how to do that too. So here are some of the methods that a layout has. You can say add view. You can say uh, remove view, remove all views, child count. We actually just a teeny bit used a couple of these methods last lecture when I was doing fragments. I had to loop over all the buttons to add an event listener to them, and I actually used some of this to talk to the layout of the activity to, or the fragment or whatever it was to like add those listeners to those buttons. So it says view group, but like a layout is a view group. You know? So just to give you an example, I've got this app here that I want to play with where um, I have downloaded flags and Anth national anthems and uh, a little bit of text information about some various countries. I just like somewhat randomly picked a bunch of countries. And so I've got like, <laughs> I, do I downloaded all of their national anthems this morning. I was using this like YouTube scraper to get all the national anthems. And so that's what I spend my time on. Um, but I also, I, I downloaded like a little bit of text about each country from Wikipedia. <laughs> and I got somewhere uh, drawable. I got like a picture of each country's flag and stuff. So I think this is, I don't really want to write a very cool app, but I just wanted to like make an app where there's just pictures of all the countries and you can click on a country and learn about it or something. It's kind of something stupid like that, okay? So, uh, Ashley, I told him. I told him about Larry. I told him. I told him. We couldn't decide which photo. You, maybe you guys can help me. Hey, which one should I post on Facebook? So help me out. I, my wife took that photo, and I said she looks tired. I said she looks too much like Dad. She's got the bags under the eyes. No, although I do like the bear. The bear's got the thing. Um, OK, so there's one. There's one. I feel like she's looking at the back. She's like, where's the return policy on this thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a brother. How do I send this back? Although that might that might lead to anyway, um, so okay, uh, there's like another one. Now she's trying to eat him. Now she's licking him. Now she's just looking at him, and that's that. So, which one do I use? Let's see. We got one and two and three and four, five, six. I need your help, okay? Three, four. Wait, we'll do votes. You can vote for more than one, okay? So, wait, hold on. I'll show them to you all again. This is a good use of class time, right? <laughs> we don't really want to learn that much stuff anyway, okay? So we got, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Someday they're going to ask you if you learned a lot of stuff in this class, and you have to lie and say yes, okay? You can vote for as many of them as you want. You don't have to vote for just one. But the one that gets the most votes, I'll use. Okay, so this is... Um, I, I'll show you all of them first, and then I'll ask you to vote for each one. Okay, cool. So that's number one. That's number two. That's number three. That's number four, five, and six. Got it? Okay, who likes number one? Wow. <laughs> you like number one? Is that a pity vote? <laughs> 
rest of you think my kid looks ugly? <laughs> okay, who likes number two? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, okay, start with. Give him up, give him up, give him up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine votes, okay. Wow. Uh, number three. You can vote for more than one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Wow, that's pretty big. Okay, number four. One, two, two votes. I thought I heard more support for four a second ago. Okay, whatever. Uh, number five. That's a pretty cute one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Did you use the thirteen? Wow, it's neck and neck. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's some kind of like Russian collusion joke to be made here. I don't know what. Um, and there's six. Who likes six? One, two, oh more. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. So it looks like this one with maybe a. You can post more than one photo, right? So maybe I'll start with this as the primary photo. Do a runoff. Do a runoff? Yeah, a runoff watch three, three, five. Okay, here's a real question. Do you want me to post it to social media right now while you guys are sitting there, or do you want me to wait till after class? <laughs> do it. Now. Do it. Now. Get so many likes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so likes. I'm trying to think like, do I have some sort of <laughs> Does it do that thing where if like load of people like it at the same time, it goes to the top of the news feed? That's true. So wait, hold on one sec. I wanna make sure. I want to make sure that, um, <laughs> and that's why I'm not allowed in Bed Bath and Beyond ever again. Okay, so let's go back to the lecture. Um, sorry. Someday, someday you're going to fill out an evaluation of this class, and there's going to be a little rating bar that says like, "Instructor made good use of class time," <laughs> and I want you all to lie <laughs> and say, "Sure, sure, he did." Um, okay, so like this app is about flags and countries and places you have visited. I don't know. It's just, I just wanted some data to like put in there and stuff. And although the flags are all sort of fixed and I could just write them in or whatever, you could also imagine I'd add other countries or I'd visit other countries or also later we're going to learn how to connect to internet. Like I put all this data, I could put all this data on a web uh, you know, URL location and I could connect to it and see what countries are located there that I could show. And so, you know, even though, like, I guess my point is part of the, part of the goal here would be for it to be dynamic and adjustable and run it tomorrow and it has different result than if you ran it today. And that won't really be the case because I am just reading a fixed data set from my hard drive here. But like, I think it easily extrapolates to where it would be able to adapt to a, a dynamic, you know, set. So kind of work with me on that. So what I kind of want to do is like for each of these countries, I want to add a little bit of UI about that country, okay? So maybe just to practice like adding any sort of UI at all, um, you know, I talked about in the slides here how you create a widget object of some kind. Uh, actually, this is the slide I want. You create a widget object of some kind, you set some of its properties, and then you add it to your layout on the screen. Now, what I already have, you know, last time I brought in a lot of code to start with, you know, I kind of had a bunch of code already written. This time I don't really. I have the data files, but I haven't written a lot of code. So like over here, I have a, a, a layout. I set it to use a grid layout because I thought that would work well for a grid of like maybe two or three rows or columns of flags. So if you're going to talk to this grid layout and you're going to add widgets to this layout, what, what do I need to add in here to the XML before I can do that? ID. I need to have an ID, right? So ID equals, uh, I don't know, I'll call it grid of flags, right? So now over here, if I wanted to add something to the screen, you know, you would do it maybe in onCreate. It depends when you want to do it. Like in this case, maybe I already have the data. So when the activity loads up, I want to I want to add this stuff to the screen. It might be in some other app you have to connect to the internet and when the data arrives then you add the UI to the screen. So like where do you do this depends on what you're doing. But like maybe I do something like, you know, text view or val tv equals a text view. You say this and then you might say, um, what do we call it? We called it uh, grid of flags. So if I say grid of flags dot add view TV. 
So you could do that. Um, I'm not sure how that would look, you know, because you, you have to set up some properties of this thing or else it's not going to look like much. Like I think you'd at least want to say tv.text equals hello Larry or something. Um, and then you would add it to the screen. Now actually, I don't remember if you don't set anything else. I don't actually remember what it will look like. I think it defaults to be up in the top left at the position zero, zero, or it might not even, I, I'm not sure like where or if we'll see it, if that's like always set, but maybe I'll just run it real quick to see if we see anything. Meanwhile, I'll check my social. Oh, 40 likes, awesome, cool. There we go. By the way, I'm such a cheese ball, I always like my own posts, you know? <laughs> like bump it up one more. Yeah, okay, whatever. Here you go, Tony. Um, <clears throat> So it's still, it's still compiling. I didn't waste your time, it was compiling anyway. Um, so it's there, it says hello Larry. Right? So it's not in the XML, it's only in the Kotlin code. It appeared on the screen. Of course, if I want to move it around and center it, whatever, like that's a little different. Um, okay, so let's go a little further with this. So I want to try to build you mental mapping between like what you would do in XML and what you would do in equivalent Kotlin code. So like in the XML, if you want to say ID equals this or text equals that or size equals that, a lot of those properties, there's just a corresponding field or property in the Kotlin that you can set that has either the exact same name or maybe a very similar name. So if you want to set the Android colon text, you don't write Android colon text, you just write text. By the way, if you're not sure, like, like why do they say Android colon? There's sometimes these prefixes that say colon. It's called an XML namespace. Um, it's just some dumb thing about XML syntax, basically. So if you want to set the text, you just write dot text equals. I did that already. If you want to say text size or text style, a lot of these things you can just set. And if you're not sure what they're called, I mean, you can actually look up the uh, documentation. If you look up the Google for like, um, you know, Android Kotlin text view API. I'm pretty sure the first hit will be, uh, you have to be careful because you want the one that says Kotlin, otherwise it shows you the Java one. They're pretty similar, but you want to look at the Kotlin one. So if you just like scroll through here and stuff, you can see what, what there is available. But even if you don't want to read all that, you can just do the kind of simpler one where you just say TV dot and you just kind of scroll through and see the stuff that pops up. You know, like if I, well, I want the size, size, oh, text size, okay, sure, equals, 30. You know, you can you can often discover these things. And I'm not going to give you some slides with every single one of these properties. I sort of figure you guys will look up the ones you want to find. Um, anyway, you can set these various properties. I think one thing that's a little confusing sometimes is like, you know, sometimes you try to set, like it says text size equals 30. It doesn't work. And you go, well, does not conform to the specified type float. So, okay, it doesn't want an int. It wants a float. So if you said like 30.0, that doesn't work either because it's a double so I think you can say 30f is a float literal, or you can say as float, or what, I don't know. Like sometimes the sometimes it's like not completely straightforward how to set these things, but like you could you can Google it, you can have figure it out, you know. And then if I reran this, the text would be bigger, you know. Okay, that's not so hard. Uh, where am I here? Now some of the properties are a little less straightforward, and that would be the ones that are about layout and position and some of that kind of stuff, like size and shape of the widget. And so I guess the rule of thumb is if the property would have said like layout or constraint or something like that, then those properties are usually set in a different way. It's kind of dumb to be really honest with you. You have to make this object called a layout params object. You have to pass the width and height of it and then you can set additional properties of it and then you have to tell the widget to use these layout params. I don't like it. That, that's what you have to do, basically. So an example of some of the stuff you do for layout params would be like, um, if you're doing a linear layout, we learned about these things like you could have gravity and you could have weight and it allows you to stretch and align and this kind of stuff. And you know, I'm not going to review or rehash all that stuff here, but like you can say, make the layout params and set the weight to this and set the gravity to that. And, and that allows you to kind of set up the widget the way that you want. And you might say, well, I don't know, how do I... How do I find this? How do I do this? Hey, I really think the way that you, you learn this is you just sort of Google, like, how do I create a new button and add it to the center in the Kotlin code or do it dynamically? And then you find some good examples of how to do that. Um, OK, so that's all fine. I think what you would find, though, is that um, it's not that bad to do this stuff if you're just sort of making one widget and just sort of putting it on the screen. That's, that's OK. That's fine. 
but it's pretty tedious if you're making four or ten or some larger number of widgets. That's pretty tedious. And so I kind of don't want to do it that way. In fact, that's part of the reason why they don't have you declare your UI as Kotlin code in the first place, because it just gets to be a lot of code. It just gets messy, you know? So let's, let's not. Um, oh, I've got a little bit more slide here. Like if you have a constraint layout, you can set the, you can constrain the edges to other edges. I, I don't think I want to look at all that unless we really need it. I come back to it. But let's see, let's see. Where do I want to get to? I want to I talk about this. If you have multiple widgets, like let's say you want to use dynamic code to generate something on the screen, but the thing that you're making is a little more complicated. It's a little button and a box and a checkbox. It's got like three or four little pieces to it. You might not really want to do it by writing Kotlin code, like I just said, because it would get kind of long and bloated and ugly. So what you might want to do instead is you can make a small layout file that just describes that little piece of UI. And then you can tell the Kotlin to read that XML file and inflate it and turn it into Kotlin object widgets for you. So you're sort of doing manually what the activity does as a whole right here. So, uh, and now you might say maybe these things seem kind of antithetical to each other or in contra contradiction with each other. Like I thought the whole point was to do stuff that was dynamic and I thought the layout XML files were sort of static and the Kotlin code was dynamic. And okay, well, it's not that the XML files are always static. It's just that like, we have thought of an XML file as being the whole activity, but you could make an XML file for just a little piece of an activity. And you could at any given point say, read that, parse that, inflate that, and it would make sort of a set of widgets to represent the stuff in that littler layout XML file. Um, so uh, you might be thinking like, well, is that like what a fragment is? Because I thought with a fragment, you could make a piece of an activity and stick it here on the screen and make another piece of an activity and stick it here on the screen as well, right? And they are kind of similar. I guess what I would say is that um, a fragment is maybe even a little beefier of a thing than this. I'm describing like a little gizmo with a few widgets, but it's just sort of just enough that you kind of wouldn't want to write all the Kotlin code to create it from scratch. A fragment could be really big and elaborate and it has a bunch of events it handles and a fragment is just sort of a beefier thing than this, you know? So I don't know, I, I will say the, the line between like how big and complicated does your thing need to be before you should make a fragment for it versus before if you should do this for it is a little bit blurry and different companies have different margin for, for that. But uh, I, look, I wanna show you an example of how to do this. So what I wanna do for our app is I wanna make for each little country in our data, I want to make a little widget that, a, a little thingy that looks like that, where it's maybe got a flag at the top, you know, with stars and stripes or whatever. And then it says, like, the name of the country. And then maybe as a checkbox, it says, like, did you visit that country? And then maybe if you, like, click on the, um, the picture of the country, it pops out some text about that nation or something. I don't know. Okay, so like three or four widgets in a little rectangle-y guy about each country, okay? So here's how you could do that using this feature that I'm describing. You go to your project and you say, by the way, if you ever, if you ever get to the point like, Sometimes your Android Studio gets kind of messed up, right? And you're like, hey, where's that thing on the left? Where did it go? You know, they, they often dock stuff. So you have to kind of look for the, oh, over here. If you click this, it pops out. And then you're like, I still don't see anything. Well, there's also like different modes that this thing can be in. And like you can show your project, your packages, your unit tests or whatever. Usually you want the Android view, which is like an Android project. And now you see all of your stuff. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, if I want to make one of these layouts, you just find your uh, layout area of your resource folder here and you right click and you say new layout resource file and you give it a file name. Uh, let's call it flag. It's not quite the right name. It's like a one country thingy or something, but I'll just say flag. And I don't think I have to set everything. We, we used this um, dialog box last time when we were setting up a portrait versus a landscape 
layout and so over here I clicked like I only want it to run when I'm in this orientation or something like that but we don't need to do any of that stuff here because this isn't a situational layout that should be used in certain cases it's just one that I want as a utility so I'll just type flag and I don't change anything else and I say okay and now I get this flag.xml file and so I think what I want to do is I want to write out the UI for one of these in here Let's just do that first before we do anything else. And so actually, I think I can use the design view for this. I don't usually use the design view, but I guess if I want this guy, that's an image view, right? So maybe I'll drag him over. By the way, I could never figure out, oh, so wait, what am I doing? Android project, uh, let's just use, what country should I use? USA, whatever. Um, you know, there's these two. I can never figure out what what is this one over here. Um, I think it's called the uh, uh, the the blueprint. So I just I just I don't want that. <laughs> I just don't know what it's for. <laughs> Whatever. So then I can I can do all the usual stuff. Like I could I could constrain this to the top left or whatever. So I got my flag, and then under the flag I want the um, name of the country. So maybe a text view for that, right? So let's drag him and. Let's attach him to the bottom of this, and let's also attach him to the left over here. And um, the name of the country, maybe instead of text view, I'll write uh, United States. Okay. And then uh, I have a checkbox that says, "Have you visited this country before?" So what is that? Buttons checkbox. I'll drag and drop him. I'll attach him to there. I'll attach him to the left. And then the checkbox, I'll write like visited question mark whatever right um okay so maybe that's a start for this this thing um if i want to make like several occurrences of this that appear on the screen or maybe one for each different country that i could have in my app i'll show you how to do that now like just to be clear if i ran my program right now you wouldn't see that appear on the screen anywhere because like this activity doesn't use that as its layout this activity uses this as its layout which is a grid with nothing in it so actually you wouldn't see a flag or whatever that stuff I was just drawing and dragging and dropping that would not appear on the screen yet anywhere okay let me show you how we've got the left part we've got the layout XML let's learn how to inflate it to make widgets it says Java it should say Kotlin widgets um, <clears throat> so if you're in your activity, you can say layout inflator dot inflate, <laughs> and then you pass r dot layout dot, and then whatever the XML file's name is. We call ours flag, so it would be r dot layout dot flag, and then comma. You're supposed to say the parent. Um, the parent is like if you want to pass in where you want to add that thing to on the screen. You can also pass null, in which case it won't add it to the screen yet, and you can add it yourself by calling the add view method. That's what I do more commonly, but Anyway, that's how to like inflate something. If you're not in an activity, like if you're in a fragment or if you're in some other piece of code, you have to say this slightly differently in terms of how do you inflate something. But today in our example, we're going to be using this first syntax because we're inside of an activity here. Okay. So let me show you. Let me show you. In the um, code for the flags activity, I'm going to get rid of this like text view. I don't need that, right? So I'm going to say... Uh, uh, val flag equals layout inflator dot inflate and I'll pass r dot layout dot flag and again it's called that because the file is flag dot xml if it was r dot layout dot marty it would be marty dot xml you get the idea right then you have to pass this other parameter of who is the parent of this thing uh, I guess I could say I could say this, but I think that's wrong. I think you're supposed to say the um, the layout, the the um, like here in this activity flags. This guy is grid of flags, so I think I'd have to pass him as the parameter, you know. So I, th I think I would have to say um, grid of flags. So I think if I just copy and then I do paste, 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 or something like that. Uh, uh, if I just remove the variable, you know, like. I think if I just do that, it will run and it will have four copies of that thing like stamped on it. And we gave it a grid layout of five by three, I think, or something. So I think it's going to have like a row of three and then a fourth one, I, I think. Uh, let me run it and see what it does. Uh, 
Uh, oh, well, we've got one. <laughs> we've only got one. I added four, but I only see one. Um, maybe it's good to talk about this. Like, do you have any idea why I only see one of the four? Any guesses? I mean, what do you think, yeah? Is it that um, the flag XML is an entire like screen word, so we're all just stacked on top of each other? That's, yeah, I think you're basically on the right track. Um, you also had your hand up. Were you going to say the same thing or something different? Yeah, I was going to say they seem to be, yeah, could they just be overlapping each other? Yeah, I think what's happening, mean, now you have to understand, like, I am not perfect at this stuff, right? So I sometimes, I, what I think is going on, and I think you guys are both on the right track, is like, I think this thing has been told that its size should like match the parent's size. Oops, what did just happen? Wait, where, where'd that go? What? They're all gone. Where did it go? <laughs> oh, I think I clicked out of it. Okay, there. Um, the, the size of it says match parent. I think maybe I want to say wrap content. Do you see how he got smaller? So like, I think the problem was there were, there were multiple ones of him, but they were each asking to take up the whole screen. And so there's just not enough screen space for them all, and one of them pushed the other ones out or something like that, right? So I think if I run it again, now that they're willing to just wrap their content in size, I think this will look better, I hope. Let's see. Yes, OK, so now I have four of these guys. And if you don't totally like the way that this looks, you can set little margins and you could resize it. Like that's, that's more about layout than about today's topic. But like, OK, fine, we can, we've basically made a stamper where we can stamp these little flag widget gizmos onto the screen, OK? And again, I hope it's clear like why I didn't use a fragment for this. Because like, you saw fragments are a lot of work, a lot of bulk, a lot of code, a lot of files. It's like an investment if you want to do fragments. And so if we're just doing this much repeated UI, maybe we don't want to do that fragment stuff, OK? So but there's a couple things missing now. We're not like done yet, right? Like what, um, what, what do we need to do now at this point, now that we're able to like stamp these flag thingies on the screen? What do we need to do next? Check how many likes we have. <laughs> Did you eat my Skittles? <laughs> Never mind. I found them. Prego rage averted. <laughs> this is my life in a nutshell. <laughs> Did you eat my Skittles? Never mind. I found them. Um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> what's next? What do we need to do next? Yeah. We need to put different flags on the screen. Yeah, make it show all the like different. I don't want a bunch of USA flags. I want the Australia flag and the China flag and the, all the different countries, right? So, I think what I want to do here is um, I want to. I don't want this four times. I basically want this, but once for each of the countries that we are dealing with, right? So you could imagine like I have this thing up here, which is a list of countries. Um, so I could say like for each country in con countries. I want to do something like that or something, but but like then I have to. I don't want it to be the USA one. I want to I want to change the you know the first one to be Australia and the second one to be Brazil. Like I, I want to start with this and then I want to adjust it to be the right one for each country. Right? Understand? So <clears throat> if that's the case, like how do you think I do that? I mean I haven't shown you yet, but like let's just like use intuition here for a second. This is going to make me 16 American flag stampers. So like, how do I make it so that some of them have other flags on them? What do you think I need to do? What do you think? Um, can you like, put IDs on all of the um, like aspects of the flag XML and like, those IDs? Yeah, that's a great idea. So I mean, whenever we want to talk to widgets, we give them little IDs so that we can refer to them, right? So let's go in here to this flag layout. And um, I'm just going to switch to the text view of it instead of the designer view. But we have this image view here. So let's give it an ID of, oops, did I do that wrong? ID. It oh, it already has an ID. So the, the thing he made it automatically have an ID. I don't like that ID. I want a different one. Um, how about flag image, flag image. Um, and then for the text view here, Maybe I'll make it say uh, uh, country name. And then I think these are breaking because it's like referring to the IDs, the old IDs down here. So these should be flag image. OK, fine. 
yeah, and then the third one is the the checkbox for whether I have visited it before. And so let's call this uh, visited box. Okay, and then this is at the bottom of uh, country name. Okay, there. So I gave more descriptive. I gave they already had IDs, um, but we gave them ones that were descriptive to us. So now we can refer to them. However, caution. You know your usual uh, technique for like how do I refer to a widget? You just refer to some variable name that has that the same as that ID. You can't really do that here. At least I don't think you can because. Um, those are sort of more like activity scoped IDs and these are IDs that are inside of this other little XML uh, you know thing that we've just inflated this layout that we've just inflated so if you want to refer to something by an ID that's part of this clump of UI then you say flag dot find view by ID. Now we learned that, I, I showed you that function name all the way back at the start of the quarter. You can use find view by ID on your activity as well. Some of you do that I've seen in your homework solutions. But like you sort of have to do it that way when you're referring to something by ID that's not directly part of your activity, that's part of some other activity or part of some little gizmo inside of your activity. You have to use this syntax. So like if I want the image of the um, country that was called uh, r.id.flagImage. Uh, here, let me zoom this so you can see it. Right? So let me like get access to the three. There's three things, I think. There's a image view. There's the text view of the country's name. And there's the have I visited it before. So let's get the val country name view equals flag dot find view by d but it's a it's a um, text view and it's called r dot id dot um, country name right and then the third one is val visited box equals flag dot find view by id it's a check box and it's called uh, r dot id dot visited box okay so like within that individual stamper as we're looping those are its three little widgets and we can talk to them, we can change their text, we can change what image they're pointing at or whatever, right? Um, <clears throat> I think what's gonna happen here is that this setting up of the thing might be sort of a bit of code. So I think what I kind of like to do is um, I would like to make some sort of function called like create flag and you pass me the country name as a string and I'll make the um, little layout for it and set it up and then put it on screen for you kind of you know so I think maybe what I want to do here is just move some of this down into its own function decomposition is good and uh, so here I would say something like create flag create a flag for that country okay so we've got the these guys here and so I think the idea is like if they pass in um, Brazil then we want the image to display r.drawable.brazil and we want the um, the name, the country name that appears on the screen to say Brazil, right? And then the visited, I don't know how we know what countries we have visited. Maybe none of them are visited initially. I don't know, whatever. But like we need to customize this thing to this country, right? So like the country name is probably the easiest part. You can just say uh, country name view dot text equals country name, right? The image is a little trickier it's basically like how do I turn the string Brazil into the ID of r.drawable.brazil because you can't be like image.set image file to be country name plus dot gif like you can't that doesn't work that's not how it works you have to pass an ID not a file name or whatever so I mean basically what I need to do is I need to convert this string into the value of this um, ID number so uh, I think the way to do that is like um, there is a, I think, I don't have this memorized, but I think I can get this to work. You, in, in an activity, you can say resources, and then you can say, I want to get an ID, an identifier, and you pass the name of it, which is the country name. You also pass what type of resource it is, which is drawable, and then you pass what package it comes from, 
and I don't know what that means or where that comes from, but you're just supposed to write package name. There's a package name property that your um, activity has. So I believe this will work. The only problem here is that it's case sensitive. So Brazil with capital B won't find anything. So I think technically I need to do like val country name to equals this dot to lowercase. Um, the other thing is like if you have um, the country name of United States, it has to become United States like that. So I think I need to replace spaces with nothing, you know, <laughs> replace space with empty. Like I think that'll clean it up so that it looks right to use for this. So um, anyway, this will be val uh, uh, image ID equals that. And then to actually put that on the screen, I will say image dot set image resource to be that image ID. Okay. I mean, you know what I mean? Just like based on the country, load the picture, the image for that country and put that into the image view. It's a little bit icky, but that's like how you have to, how you have to do that in the Kotlin code. Okay. Um, I think I could maybe run this. I think it looks okay. Oh, the one thing is, well, maybe this will still work. If you do it this way, it like adds it to the grid of flags as soon as it inflates it, and then we change it a bunch. So usually what I do is I say null here. So like this is like uh, when, you're, when you're first reading the XML in where it just has the USA flag every time. If you pass uh, the grid of flags as that root parameter, it'll go ahead and put the thing on the screen right away immediately with the USA flag on it. And then like right after that, it'll change it to the Brazil flag or whatever. So it's possible that for like a millisecond, it's got the wrong flag and then it flickers to the right flag. Do you know what I'm saying? So like what I prefer to do is create it, but don't like make it appear yet. Set all the stuff up and then like put it on the screen. So if you want to do that, you pass like a null here. And then when you're all done, like setting everything up the way that you want, you say grid of flags, which is my layout dot add view. And then you pass um, this like thing that you've been working on all this time, flag. So it makes sense you add it at the end after you've set it up. Uh, okay, let's try it. Let's see if we get a bunch of cool flags on the screen here. You need, you need a country name too. Oh, okay, yeah, probably crash. Country name too. Uh, if you want, I'll just run it with it without that because you can see like what if I didn't pass the right um, identifier. I believe it'll just give me an exception. It'll crash, I believe. Uh, so none of them loaded up. I thought it would have an error. Does it not? No? Oh, well, it just can't find those image resources. Let me try again. I just, I changed it to country name two. I press the run button. I remember, hey, there we go. Cool. We got a lot of countries here. I remember in ancient times when I was a college student, it would drive me crazy when I watch the professor teaching and coding and he's like typing his code and he's written like 50 lines and the third line has a bug in it and it's just like there for 20 minutes and he doesn't see it and I'm like, ah, I have a bug on line three. And I just wanted to like run up there and push him away and <laughs> start <laughs> typing for him. Um, yeah, okay, so we got countries. This is great, right? So that's kind of the meat of it is you can make these XML files and you can inflate them and then they appear on the screen and you know, like this goes hand in hand with like if you have different data that comes in at different times, you can use this same technique to like read that file or read that URL or whatever. And for each URL, for each file, for each line, for each image, put a little thing on the screen. Now, um, okay, the one thing though is that these don't do anything. Like if I tap on these, you know, it doesn't, there's no like event handling. I mean, there is a checkbox, but it doesn't really do anything when I click on this stuff, right? So sometimes when you have these little stamped custom UIs like this, you do sometimes want to add some kind of event interaction on them. Now, if you find that your little stamped thing has like 20 different events it's responding to, that starts to feel like maybe it's a fragment. I don't know, like you, you have to decide the threshold here. But if you have maybe like one or two events you're gonna respond to, we can work that out. Let's make it so that when you tap on the flag of a country, it will pop up some information about that country, okay? So how do you think we do that? I mean, I didn't teach you yet, but like, do you have a guess? A widget I can create? Well, so, okay, so just a clickable widget in general, this is an image view, 
which displays images, but it's not particularly able to respond to events. So maybe we need to switch what widget that is. Image button would probably be better because that allows you to click on it, right? So what if I go and change this real fast? So instead of being an image view, it's an image button. Um, if you write on click equals on here, I don't think that works properly. We saw last time with fragments that on click in XML didn't work. You also have seen certain widget types like lists and spinners on click in XML doesn't work. I believe this is another case where you have to do it in a different way. You can't wire up the on click handler here yet. Um, okay, that's a good start. Image button. I think that's fine. I think the only other change I need to make the code is like here I said that this is an image view. So I think I need to say button. But other than that, I think I'm I think I'm pretty good. Um, that will make it clickable, but it still doesn't like do anything when I click it, right? So what else? This is a good start. What do I need to do else otherwise to make it react to a click? What do you think? Yeah? Add a listener. Yeah, just in the Kotlin code. So I have a variable called image here that refers to each of these image buttons. And you can attach listeners to these widgets in Kotlin code if you want to. So let's do that. So if I um, just here or somewhere, if I say image dot set on click listener, and we learn the syntax, you just do like that, right? Um, with the um, list view and spinner listeners, you had like underscore, uh, you know, you had like four of these things and then an arrow and stuff, right? Those listeners take a lot of different parameters. The listener for clicks just takes one parameter, which is like what view, what widget got clicked on. So you could either say view like with an arrow like that's the parameter or the syntax for these lambdas if they take one parameter you can just not declare it and it will be implicitly be declared to be called it <laughs> so like um, we have an on click listener maybe it just pops up a toast toast dot make text this comma you clicked dollar sign country name toast dot uh, length short dot show so you know, just, just like pop up a toast when I click on a, um, a flag. So let's just test that real quick, see if it works. OK. You clicked China. You clicked United Kingdom. So I mean, OK, that's, how you, that's the basic idea of how you wire up an event handler on one of these dynamic uh, layout gizmos, okay? So far, so good. Um, there's two more pieces that I want to add to this, but before I go ahead with any other stuff, I just wanted to make sure if we had any questions so far, kind of about the layout XML or the Kotlin code to talk to that XML or kind of when or why we're doing this. It's just any question you might have so far, yeah. So it's got, it, you know, kind of put like a border around all of the flags to make it look like a button. Is that, can you get rid of that? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't remember how off the top of my head. Like, there's some setting for this button. You could even set it in the XML, I think. There's, it's some sort of, like, opacity or button type or visibility. I, I've Googled it before, but, like, basically just Google for, like, image button, hide gray background. I don't remember. Do you want me to try to look it up while we're talking? Right now? <laughs> I'll spend 10 seconds trying to find out. Android image button, hide gray background. Uh... Any way to remove the gray background from image buttons? Yes, please. Uh, set background drawable, null. Um, oh, you can also do this. So uh, yeah, one of these two. I've done this before. It's, it's one of these things where like some once upon a time I did that. Uh, there, I think it's, do you see that? I think it's no longer, it's no longer gonna show that. So anyway. I think next time we run it, I won't rerun it yet, but the next time I think it'll it'll be missing. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. So when you complete it but you don't add it to like the thing, where does it go? Like where does it sit? Where does it end? Yeah, if a if a tree falls down in the woods and no one hears it or something. Yeah. Um does it make a sound? So yeah, if you just create a widget or if you just inflate a layout in the Kotlin code, but you never add it to any container or view group or activity or layout or anything like that then it just will never show up on the screen. And essentially, it'll just be a waste of memory. And when you get to the end of your function or whatever, Kotlin will sort of notice that these widget objects are not attached to anything. And I think the garbage collection will just kind of throw them away. So the net effect will be that nothing shows up and you don't see anything. Or there's basically no, no effect if you don't add them to the screen somewhere. 
Different UI frameworks have different logic about this sort of stuff. Like uh, if you code a GUI in C++, there's a framework called Qt. And in Qt, if you create a widget and you don't say that you want to add it somewhere, it just picks the last window that you made and it puts it there. <laughs> so like some widget libraries are like, you built it, I'm going to put it on the screen somewhere. And other widget libraries are like, hey, you tell me where you want to add it and then I'll add it for you. Otherwise, I won't put it anywhere. So that's the way this one chooses to work. Any other questions so far? Yeah. I didn't get how you, you know, like get all the specific details about the countries and then it's flag and it's like all the information. Oh, oh, oh. So how do I, how do I get these pictures and where does that come from? Well, um, I might have just raced past it a little bit, but in my project, mm -hmm. in the res, in the res folder in drawable, I have a bunch of images of all the um, countries mm -hmm. and I carefully named them the same as I have this array of strings of all the country names. So I loop over that array and then like if the country is, you know, Ghana, I tell it to load r.drawable.ghana and then the, those names here kind of correspond to those file names in the res folder. There's a command called um, uh, resource get identified. So I look up the ID for r.drawable.gone based on that string. So, oh, one thing. So, so there's like a search function you were using in Kotlin, right? A Maybe search? Searching through all the folders. Well, so what I'm not doing, yeah, I mean, what, what you could imagine that might be a little better than this would be instead of having this constant array of countries, I would just say, hey, uh, go look in the drawable folder and for each file in the drawable folder, put a, a you know flag for that one. But actually, that's pretty hard to do. Um, the internal resources that are packed into your project, there's not like a super easy way to do a for loop over them. Um, so I mean, you can, but it's like pretty icky, and I don't actually want to show you how to do it. And there, you might say, well, that's bad. Well, I want to do that. But I guess what I would say is, like, frankly, you don't usually have a giant set of resources baked into your app that you loop over. What you normally do is connect to some other data source, like a database or a website, query it for the data, and then loop over that. And you can loop over that with just a for loop or something. So like the part of this that's a little bit unrealistic is the like where did the data come from part. And like I just have to do this piece by piece. You know, like next week, week after that, I'll show you how to like do a web request to get the flags and draw the flags and stuff, basically. Right? Yeah, great. Any other questions so far? Okay. Um, well, let's do a couple things before we're done. We've got a few more minutes. Um, when I click on the country, it just sort of goes, look, you clicked on China. Well, that's not that cool. Maybe we could make it do a little bit more than that. Um, so a couple things I'll do. Let me see how much time I have. Uh, I want to see if I can make it pop up a little dialog box. So I want to talk about dialog boxes for a second. Dialog boxes, I mean, I think they can be complicated, but I don't really want to show you the complicated part. I think mostly if you learn the sort of simple version of this, it's good enough for like 90% of your usage and you can Google it the other times. So like there's lots of different reasons why you might want to pop up a dialog box. It's almost like popping up another activity, except it's just like on top and it doesn't cover the whole screen and it maybe blurs the, the activity underneath it. And it's temporary, it's like a really quick message and maybe you say yes or no, you interact with it a little, you click a choice or something and then it goes away. You go back to the activity where you came from. So, you know, I wanna show you how to pop up dialogues like this. And for what it's worth, I, you know, in terms of the like activity life cycle, like if this activity pops up this dialogue, the activity gets called uh, on pause and then this pops up. And then when you're done with this, the activity says on resume. So that's kind of the state the activity would be in. Um, so that's what a dialogue is or, you know, why you would use it would be for some temporary thing. I mean, you could just pop up another activity and then ask the user the question or show them the message. And then when they're done, you could go back to the original activity. But that's considered more disruptive to the user. People like to be able to see that what they're working on is still there underneath, you know. So um, there's different types of dialogues that come with Android and you can also make a custom dialogue that has whatever contents you want. I'm just not gonna teach you most of this because I can't say I've ever ran into like a case where I needed some of these things. You know, like maybe sometimes you wanna write a calendar app or something, fine, okay, go Google how to do a time picker dialogue. Mostly I just either wanna pop up a message like here's something that happened or I want to ask them a quick question. Which of these two things do you want? Yes or no? Or here's three choices. Which one do you want? Like some quick input output kind of a thing, you know? So um, there's lots of different pieces of a dialogue. 
there's a message, it has a title, sometimes it has an icon. There are usually buttons of choices at the bottom. <laughs> they have these funny names for them in Android. A lot of times a dialogue will have like a yes or no or an okay and cancel. Like they call it the positive button and the negative button. And then sometimes they have a neutral button. And the reason for that is partly because, um, you know, there might be different languages, right? You don't want to call it the yes button and the no button. And they want to use a little bit more vague name for these things. But basically what I'm going to show you is you have to tell it to have a positive button so that you can just say okay to like close the thing. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, so in yet another example of questionable design in the Android uh, ecosystem, if you want a dialog, you don't just say pop up dialog paren paren. No, it wouldn't be like that. That would be too easy. Instead, you have to make a dialog builder object. And then you have to tell it a bunch of stuff. And then when you're done doing that, you ask the builder to build the dialog. And then you have a dialog that can show it. So actually, that's a typo. That should say dial dialog. But um, there's probably some Bob the Builder. Isn't that his name, Bob the Builder? Joke here. But um, that's how you make a dialog. Uh, this is actually, uh, in software development, this is actually called the builder pattern. And a lot of developers think this is a really elegant way to create and initialize some complicated object that needs a lot of settings or initialization flags before you can run it. So some people think it's a really good design. I think it kind of blows, but whatever. Um, so if you want to make a dialog, imagine if you're trying to pop up a dialog that says uh, something about United States, like you clicked on United States. Let's try to make our, our app do that. Down here where you say, um, uh, you clicked country name you know for the on click listener let's make that a little more interesting let's make a function called show country info and you pass me the country name as a string and so here instead of toast i'm going to say um show country info about this country name you know so i just want to pull this out it's its own function right Okay, so how do you show country info? Well, let's make a, a dialog. So I could basically copy some of this stuff. Um, oops, I commented all of it. Why did it do that? And uh, so this is supposed to say val dialog. So again, like what you're doing here is you create this builder guy and then you call set, 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 and you kind of set up all the different parameters that you want the dialog to have. And then when you're done, you say create. And then that returns the actual dialog to you. And you call show on that. That makes the dialog appear on the screen. When the dialog appears, the activity pauses underneath, like I said. So it kind of just sits there until you're done. Um, so uh, hey, maybe I'll call this Bob, because it's Bob the Builder, right? Uh, let's see, how do I do that? A refactor, rename, Bob. There, Bob the Builder. Um, so instead of my dialogue, we might say like uh, info about dollar country name. And instead of welcome to my app, just for a minute, let's just say you clicked country name. I just want to test it, right? There. So let's try it. If I rerun my app, it's compiling. <clears throat> You click Germany. Wow, cool. What's missing? There's no OK button or whatever. I think if you just tap the empty space, it goes away. But I don't know. I kind of want an OK button here. So maybe we can set a few more properties here. But that's kind of the idea. It's not that bad. It's just a little weird. Um, there's a whole bunch of these like set methods of setting up a dialog. And I don't think I want to go through kind of all of them with you guys, but like you can set the title and the icon and the message and different things. You can also choose like, are you asking the user a question? If so, you know, are you giving them a choice between different items? Are you giving them a choice between checkboxes or whatever? You can also set up a positive or negative button. Let's look at positive or negative button, I think. That's what I want to talk about. Here, in your builder, you say set positive button, and then you write the text that you want to appear on the button. And then you write a set of curly braces that indicate the function, like the event handling function that you want to call when that button gets clicked. 
and the function takes two parameters, the dialog and the ID number of the button that got clicked on. So frankly, I don't need either of those parameters. So basically, I'm going to grab this and paste this here and say, uh, I don't need the dialog and the ID, Bob. I just, I just underscore them. So now this would be the code to close the dialog. I don't think I actually need to say that I need to close the dialog. I think it'll just do that for me. But if I want to do anything before I close the dialog, I can put the code there. Uh, let's just double check that to confirm. I told it to rerun the app. So if I click China, it says you click China. So now I have an OK button because I added this set positive button command. If I click here, it goes away. So OK, fine. So you can have OK, you can have cancel, and you can respond to those with different code that runs in the curly braces. And so that's mostly what I want to show you guys. Um, maybe to make this a little more interesting, um, what I did here is I have text files of information about each country. So maybe what I could do is um, similarly here, like how um, I turned uh, I turned the image of like you know, I had the string of uh, United States, and I turned it into r.drawable.united States. I have a text file that's r.raw.united States. And that same sort of logic would just be that it's not a drawable resource, it's a raw resource, and it's not the image ID, it's the text file ID, okay? And if I want to read the entire contents of that file and put that up on the dialog box, you can say resources dot uh, open raw resource, the one that has that text file ID, get a buffered reader on it, and then I think there's a read read text method that reads all the text. So val file text equals that. So just like read all of that file in as a big string. That's what that does. So now instead of saying you clicked on China, I could display that file text as the like message of the dialog box. Okay, so we'll learn a little bit about the country. In particular, we will learn the contents of the first paragraph of the Wikipedia page about that country. Italy, officially the Italian Republic, a country in Europe, blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. You know, United Kingdom, officially blah, 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 blah. Cool, right? So like now I'm getting a little bit of stuff when I click on each one. If I kind of whiz through that, I've got like these text files. I'm basically just grabbing their contents out of them, right? Okay. So, a question about that? Yeah. If the like message in the draw, in the dialog box is really really long, is it scrollable? I forget if it scrolls. Let me see if any of them are are long enough. I thought it did. I don't remember if any of these messages are long enough. Okay. What I could do is. Um, where is the United States one? Just put a bunch of copies. When I run it again in a second, we'll check if it scrolls, OK? So I mean, I, I wanted to show you kind of the basics of how to make a dialog box pop up on the screen. There's a little more to it. If you want to make a dialog box that has like check boxes or radio buttons or whatever, <coughs> you can make a, I'm not going to demo this with code, but like you can make an array of items and set those to be your items. And then when they click one, you get call that function and it passes you the index. And then you know what index they clicked on. So you can pop up a dialog that presents a set of choices and they choose one. So you can get input from the user doing stuff like that. I'm not going to go through the rest of it because I think by far the most common thing I want is like an information message. You might say, how is this better than a toast? Well. Remember, a toast is just a little trim on the bottom, and then it automatically fades after like five seconds. So, like, United States is a country with a population of 200 million. Ah, you, know, you can't read it, and it fades away, and it doesn't get tall. So, like, this is a little better than a toast, right? It's also, I mean, arguably, this could have been its own activity that popped up. It kind of depends on the length and size and complexity of the stuff you want to show the user or ask the user, right? Should we do one more thing? We only got five minutes, but I think I can fit this in. Um, I want to do these national anthems. <laughs> so I'm trying to show you a bunch of stuff here that doesn't take a ton of uh, slides to learn about. If you want to play sounds, like MP3s and stuff, there's an object called Media Player. It's not that hard. <laughs> you, you say media player create. you pass the activity, and you pass the resource ID of the song you want to play, and then you say start, and it starts playing. 
Now, it gets a little more complicated if it's like, what if you're making a little jukebox or a game and there's background music playing? What if the user jumps out of your app and goes to another app? You might want the music to stop, right? So, like, what do you, what do you generally speaking, what do you think you do to accomplish that? What do you think? Yeah. In your Maybe you're on pause, you do mp.stop. Yeah, yeah, those life cycle methods. Like we didn't, I mean, I taught you about those methods, but I didn't like use them a lot, you know, but like you, you say on pause or on stop, then I want my music player to stop as well, right? So just to like show you, I only got a couple minutes, but I just want to see if I can maybe get this to work. So again, I want the resource of the uh, raw file for the national anthem for that country. And so if I go back here, I've been doing stuff like this to get the ID of a resource. Maybe what I could do is um, I could also get, you know, from, uh, from the string United States, uh, the anthem is called r.raw.unitedstates underscore anthem. That's why I named the mp3s with the suffix, because um, they have to be unique without the extensions. But maybe if I said like mp3 file ID, that's equal to the country name with raw, but it's not the country name, it's like the country name to underscore anthem. You know what I mean? Like that's the ID for the song. Oh, does that not work? Oh, I think I have to say, uh, I have to put braces around it. I could put, I could concatenate as well. I think that'll do it. Um, so I get the anthem. If I want to play that as a song, I basically just have to do this part right here. So create a media player. Now it doesn't find it. I have to import it. I'll press alt enter. And now instead of saying r.raw.filename, I'll say mp3 file ID. Like that, I just looked up the file resource ID that I want to play. And uh, that's mostly it. Let me see if that works. Now, I don't know if you guys will hear it that well. And I don't know if it'll come through on the video recording either. Let's try it. Want to hear some national anthems here? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh oh. Uh, resource not found. ID zero zero. Uh, I wonder if I did this wrong. United States anthem. Wait, let me um, plus. If I can get it to work in just a second, I'll give up. But doesn't that look great? It's the country name two, which is like the lowercase version, plus underscore anthem, and it's a raw resource. I think that looks right. Let's try again. Brazil. Is that the Brazilian anthem? <laughs> um, <clears throat> the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, that's great and all. So, I mean, I'm basically done, but like, what can be annoying is if you start a song playing and it's long and you never like keep track of it or whatever. What you might want to do is like when they click the positive button to like close the dialogue, maybe you would say media player dot stop. Uh, let's run it one more time. Uh, you notice the music keeps playing because it's like I never told it to stop. So wait, let me, there it goes, it stopped. Let me run it one last time and then we'll call it a day. I will click it, and then I hope after I say OK to close the box, the music will <coughs> shut off. Let's try uh, uh, China. And it stopped. All right, so hey, have a great day. Go like my social media posts. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I'll see you next week. Take care. China is the United States.